Hello, welcome back to Miss Finance. My name is Rebecca and on this channel I go through all things accounting, finance, Excel and investment related. So if you like this kind of stuff, please do consider subscribing. So today we're going to have a look at IFRS 16 examples. Now I'm not going to go through all the initial measurement and recognition of an asset with you. I can cover that in a different video, but I thought it'd be quite useful just to see some real life examples and go through those instead. So let's crack on. So with example one, we have a piece of machinery that is being hired by a leasee from a lesser through a contract with a supplier for less than one year. How would we account for this? Now, the leasee is the individual who is leasing the asset. The lesser is the one that's leasing the asset to you. Now, under IFRS 16, leases may elect not to recognise a right of use asset or a liability where they've got a lease term of 12 months or less. So in such cases, the way that they would account for that is that they would put the lease payments into the profit and loss statement, otherwise known as the income statement, on a straight line basis over the term of the lease. So if the lease was for four years, you would take the total payments and you would divide that by four and that would be what's going to profit and loss account. Now the exemption is required to be applied by class of underlying assets. So if you've got machinery that's being leased and vehicles that are being leased, they're two different types of underlying assets. So you must apply that exemption to both classes. Now let's have a look at example two. So we've got an engineering company and they have decided to upgrade their laptops used by employees. Each individual laptop cost £500 and they purchase all four on contract with a supplier. So they've gone through so they've gone through all of the workings and they've realised that this is a finance lease. Now should we recognise that as a finance lease though? That's the question. Now, there is a clause under IFRS 16 that leases are not actually required to recognise assets or liabilities for leases of a low value. So they've given examples like tablets, personal computers, small items of office furniture and telephones. So in this case, they can have a clause within their financial statements under IFRS 16 and within their policies for recognising assets and leases to state that they will not be recognising anything under a threshold of, say, £500. So in this case, they're not going to recognise this as a finance lease and instead the costs associated would also go through the profit and loss account just like in example one. So let's have a look at example three. So we've got a company that has identified a finance lease through the right to use a finance vehicle under the contract with an external hire purchase company. What would be the original entries into the financial statements? So we've got a finance lease and we need to have a look at what the original entries are. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to recognise an asset and we're also going to recognise a liability under lease obligation. So we're going to debit right of use asset and we're going to credit the liability and that's going to be at present value. Now each period what we're going to need to do for the asset we're going to have to post depreciation as a debit so a debit into the profit and loss account or the income statement and a credit against accumulated depreciation regarding that right of use asset. Now in terms of the interest on the lease what we're going to need to do is debit interest charged into the profit and loss account or income statement and then we're going to have to credit that lease liability on the balance sheet. So I hope this is making sense so far. Now example four company has identified a finance lease for a new vehicle. The vehicle will cost £30,000 each year. The interest implicit in the lease is 4% and the lease is for four years. So how would the lease liability be calculated? So for the lease liability, we need to work out what the present value of the lease is. So here I've got a table that I've completed in Excel and that's the formula that I've used above equals PV open brackets 4% 4, four years minus £30,000 and then 0, 0 in Excel and that will get me to the £108,896.86 and that's what I'm going to recognise as both an asset and a lease. However, if I want to split that out year by year, the present value in year one is 28,846, 27,736, 26,669, and then 25,644 in year four. So let's move on to number five. So here we've got a company that has identified a finance lease for an asset that they have. So the vehicle will cost £60,000 each year. The interest implicit in the lease is 7% and the lease is for five years. So again, how would the lease be calculated? So we're going to use the same formulas as before. So if I put into Excel equals PV, 7% for the lease, five for the number of payments, minus 60,000 for the cash flow, and then zero, zero into Excel, then that's going to spit out 246,011 pound 85 for the total liability that I'm going to recognize. Now, in terms of the present value by year, I've popped a little table there that you can see 
we've got 56,074, 52,406, 48,977, 45,773 and 42,779 there which then gets me back to the 246,011. So example five has been continued here. So how do we account for depreciation and interest on this lease? So firstly, we can take the present value of that 246,011 pound 85. And I've just popped a table here at the bottom to show how we'd calculate interest and the lease liability and the liability carry forward because every year you're going to be making a payment to that third party for the lease hire. So in our case, that's 60,000 pounds, but that's actually split between interest and the lease liability. So if I was to take that 246,011 pound 85 in year one and actually multiply that by 7%, I get interest of 17,220.83. So that means that the lease liability element of that has to be 42,779 pound and 17. So my liability carry forward is just going to continue to reduce every single year. And you'll notice at the bottom of that table that where I've got that negative 300,000 total against cash, the total of my interest and lease liability added together at the end balances that to zero. So in order to account for the interest element here in the p and I'm going to have to debit the profit and loss account to interest charged of £17,220.83. And then I would also need to debit the balance sheet lease liability with £42,779.17. And, and then I would credit the bank with the £60,000 payment. Now, in terms of the depreciation, here we will have taken the present value of the asset, which was £246,011.85. And that's what we've got sat as the cost of the, that asset. So the lease terms over five years. So what we can do is we can take that £246,011.85 and divide that by five, giving us £49,202.37. And that's what we're going to depreciate every year. So I'm going to debit the profit and loss account or the income statement to the depreciation. And that's going to be my £49,202.37. And then I'm going to post a credit to the right of use asset accumulated depreciation account of the £49,202.37. So every year the asset value is being reduced by the £49,000. So I hope you found this video useful. Do consider subscribing as always and I shall see you on the next video.